so we've talked about black powder and powders in general, including magnetic powder. We looked at the fl uh, fluorescent powder. And now what I'd like to do is uh, talk about textured surfaces. So textured surfaces can be a problem because when you go ahead and apply your powder, it may or may not get into the texture itself. So what kind of texture am I talking about? Uh, maybe the dash of a, of a car has that pebble grain or a vinyl cover on a refrigerator, anything like that. So some of the, the powder may or may not get down into the texture. Even if it does, when you try to lift with normal tape, it's just gonna be picking up the surface powder and not the powder that's down in the texture. So I'm gonna show two videos here. One is a special tape called diff lift tape. And then the next video is on something called liquid lift. Uh, then we'll also talk about these other two possibilities, microsil casting putty and glue. Diff lift tape is designed to be used on textured surfaces such as a car dash, refrigerator, bank countertop, any textured surface where a lot of times you would pass over because you did not have a way to lift the print. What I have here is a piece of textured tile and I'm going to take and use diff lift tape, which comes in a roll and cut off a short section of the tape. Place it over my latent prints and just using my index finger, I'm going to take and rub it in until I can see it all evening out. Then I would take and lift it off and place it on a white backing card. Smooth it out and you have an excellent fingerprint transferred from a textured surface to a nice white backing card. But what do you do when you've done your job? You found your latent print and you developed it, but it isn't conducive to lifting with tape due to the texture of the surface. You can and should, of course, photograph it for the record. You might try a product we make called LiquiLift. LiquiLift is ideal for getting clean and complete lifts from pebble grains, plastics, vinyl dashboards, textured concrete, and various untreated woods. To avoid getting unusable lifts like this one, here's what you do. Depending on the area you choose to lift, Place one or two drops of the LiquiLift solution directly on the powdered latent. Spread the LiquiLift out by blowing on the straw as thin as possible and make sure that you spread it out at least one eighth of an inch beyond the print itself. Let the solution completely dry. You can use a blow dryer on warm, but don't let it get too hot. Once dry, place your lifting tape over your lift, press thoroughly to ensure complete adhesion and lift slowly and carefully. Then affix the lift to a suitable backing card. This technique works well once you have already developed your print. So this is diff lift tape right here. The way it works is it's thick and somewhat pliable so that when you place this on a textured surface, you can press down and get it into the texture area and then when you lift it it's going to lift up that powder that was down in the texture this is what the lifts look like so that's diff lift tape but let's talk about microsil casting putty well it's normally used for tool marks and impressions so let's say you have a tool mark on a door jam and you cannot collect the door jam you can mix up this silicon material, spread it over the door jam where the tool mark is. It sets in five minutes or so, and then you peel it off and you have a high resolution cast of that tool mark. Well, we can also use it for fingerprints. And the way you use it for fingerprints is like this. This is an old Coca-Cola bottle and if you're familiar with these, they have contours down the sides. So there's a fingerprint down in there. And just using our regular tape with powder would be hard to lift that out. So after dusting, if you just take your microsil and coat it, 
Then when it dries, peel it off, then you will have the fingerprint powder adhering to the microsill. So that works out very nicely. And what I'd like to do is actually demonstrate that. So here's the microsill, and it comes with the silicone material and then also a hardener. It comes with some tongue depressors and a little white card to mix your material on. Well, these are kind of small, so I prefer to use the back of a fingerprint card instead, because then I have a little more space to work. So let's say that I have, oh, uh, a fingerprint. Let me go ahead and put one on. It's kind of down in this area here. Now I can go ahead and dust that. And there's the fingerprint. But the problem is trying to get a piece of tape on there. That's gonna be really hard without messing it up because it's all contoured, it's set down low. It's, it's a flat piece of tape, just can't make it. So I want to lift that somehow. So here I'm gonna do um, a microsill lift. So I'm going to open this up. So I'm going to put a strip of this on the card. I'm mixing Latin. All right. And then we have the hardener. Now the hardener, it comes out in a smaller stream. So you make a strip that's the same length, but notice that it's not as wide. And that's, that's typical because the opening is different, but that's the right proportion. Then the next thing you do is take the tongue depressor and mix the two together and you try to get it so most of the blue goes away. And you can't take too long to do this because it's now starting to set up. So I'm gonna get a bunch of this here and I scoop it up with the tongue depressor. And I come over to this and just spread it on right over the fingerprint. Okay. So now all I have to do is wait. Uh, I have it a little thick here, so I, I should wait about five minutes. And then we lift that off, off and it should bring with it the fingerprint powder. All right, so we'll look at that in a few minutes. So here's one that I did before on some textured floor tile. Uh, you can kind of see the texture running through it. And it would have been hard really to have a nice clean lift with tape. So by using the microsill, it lifts the print off. Now, one thing to be aware of is this is a reversed print now. Normally we're looking through clear tape to see the latent print that has been dusted. Here we have lifted it and it's not clear. So we're looking at the other side so you, what you have to do to use this is to photograph it and then flip it in the software. Now, these are actually some examples a student did. You can tell by these lines in here that this was some kind of textured material. It was probably the, the wood that this is on now. But notice how nicely it picked up those fingerprints. And then uh, she also did this one, which was on a, the the larger area of a key, a door key. Looks like a quick set key. And notice how it picked it up there. And also notice how it formed to the contour, the uh, elevations and so forth of the key itself. And that's what this microsill does. It gives you a high resolution uh, copy or cast of whatever it is you're doing here. So we have a nice cast of not only the key, but it picked up the fingerprint itself. Remember we had this figurine that had contours to it. I dusted it for fingerprints and it came out just fine. But to lift it, that would have been a real challenge given the contours to use 
normal fingerprint tape. So instead, we mixed up the microsill and put it on top here. And after about 10 minutes, we can take it off. Let's see what we have. So it just peels off. One thing you don't want to do is leave it on too long. All right, it's coming off. Just had to get it started. Right there is the fingerprint that I dusted. It's now reversed. So in order to use this for uh, APHIS or for making a comparison, you would have to photograph it and then flip it. And then you would have the correct view of the fingerprint to make the comparison, to enter it into APHIS and so forth. So that's using the microsill to lift the dusted fingerprint. Now, the way we would normally preserve this or uh, protect it would be to put it into a small box in order to keep it from uh, getting damaged. Now, it stays flexible, but the powder, uh, if you, you could smudge it if you rub it. So putting it in this box would be just fine. AccuTrans or a similar device and product. The thing with AccuTrans is it's got this extruder gun and then it has cartridges that you load into it. Then on the end of the cartridge, you put these tips. And so this is all one unit. And then when you squeeze the, the handle, the trigger, so to speak, it has plungers that push down the material from the two different types. But it also has this mixing uh, tube here. It's like a corkscrew. And so the materials mix as they come out. You can get the material in different colors, including a clear. So that makes it really nice for doing fingerprints because then you can just put this over your fingerprint and then when you lift it off, you don't have to reverse anything because you're looking through the material. And I've got a short video here that actually shows using it for fingerprints. Using standard mixing tip, apply the transparent polyvinyl siloxane to the lead print, keeping the tip in the product to eliminate bubbles. The polyvinyl siloxane is self-pooling. Allow this to set up two to three minutes, depending on the air temperature. Then it can be removed and preserved. You now have a clear lift that you can photograph through and put straight into your aphid system. So there's, there's some ways to get a print off of a textured surface. And then we have one more. Now you remember the liquid lift? Well, we can do the same thing with glue. So this is a print that has been lifted off of a surface using glue. And I'm gonna use a golf ball. Now the golf ball has some real challenges as far as a fingerprint, two things. It has little indentations, the texture here. Uh, that's one problem. All this texture here. So when a fingertip touches, a lot of that is actually going to go down into those spaces. But when you try to put tape over there, the tape won't go down in those spaces. But the second problem is that's a sphere. So trying to get a piece of tape to, to go down all directions on here is next to impossible. Now, I will talk about polyethylene tape that does have a little stretch to it, but still it would be hard with a a small sphere like this. So what can I do? Well, first of all, let me go ahead and put a fingerprint on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and dust it. All right, now, what typically happens when you do this is where the raised little edges are, those become very dark from the powder. But down in the little divots, you can see the ridge detail. So there is ridge detail all in there. So what could I do? Well, one thing I could do is use my microsill and then lift it off. That would be perfect. I could also use AccuTrans and lift it off. That would be 
likewise perfect. But I don't have either one of those. So what I'm going to do is use Elmer's glue. To do this, we're going to do it just like we saw with the liquid lift. You go ahead and open the glue. And so here is my area that I want to get. I'm going to put the glue over here. And you need to be a little bit generous with it. Here's what you do. So what I'm doing is I'm using this straw. I'm blowing through this straw to smooth the glue out to get it to cover the fingerprint. And it needs to be a little thick like that. Now that's gonna, because it's just glue, it's gonna take a while to dry. But when it does dry, it will actually dry clear. And then you'll be able to see the fingerprint through there. I have one that I did earlier that dried. <laughs> okay, so now what do we do once it's dry? Well, you go ahead and take regular fingerprint tape and put it right over where the latent print is. So I'm thinking it's right here, yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and press this down the best I can. To cover the latent print and most of that glue. And then very carefully, I'm gonna lift the tape and you watch what you're doing on the corners first, the edges, and make sure that it's actually picking up, up the glue. So here we go, we're gonna... And sometimes it's just a matter of getting the glue started. Okay, so there we go. Now I actually have lifted that off. We can now see the ridge detail in there. So let me show you what it should look like. Uh, here's one that I did on a card, but I have it on the screen, so it's a little easier to see. Let's take a look. Well, there it is. You can see ridge detail in here. And that's because I lifted up that bit of glue off the golf ball. Okay, so that's lifting with glue just like using a transparent AccuTrans material. Now there are a couple of other options. Polyethylene tape, uh, that does have a little bit of stretch to it. And so you can use it on some curved surfaces, not really tight curves. You can also use a gelatin lifter. So you dust with powder, then these gelatin lifters uh, have a tacky side to them. I mean, you, you take the plastic off, you have the tacky side, and you can use that to lift your powder. So those are another couple of ways.